Tiara here from Gypsy Fae Creations. Thanks so much for tuning in. Today is a fandom soap. Yay for fandom soaps. My favorite. So I'm going to be doing a Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit slash Hobbit Hole House in the Hill Lord of the Rings type soap. I'm going to be using my PVC pipes here to start off for day one with making the door. And then once I have those unmolded, I'm going to do some fancy soap dough work and we're eventually going to embed them into the hill as the base of the soap. So to get started with this, I'm going to pour in my lye water solution, sodium lactate, coconut milk, and kaolin clay in here and give it a whirl. And then we're gonna pour it into a PVC pipe and make a round embed. So the fragrance that I'm going to be using to scent this is by Nature's Garden and Candles and it's called Tobacco. And I chose this because I thought it reminded me of like the pipe weed that Bilbo and Gandalf would smoke in their pipes. And it is a very, like even that picture reminds me of like Bilbo sitting down writing in his little adventure book and that's what his desk would look like. <laughs> but the scents that are in this are not not just like a tobacco and um, smoke smell. It has notes of, it says, fresh citrus top with juniper berries and woodsy notes of vetiver. It begins with notes of lemon, orange, verbena, followed by middle notes of juniper berry and hay, and sitting on base notes of labnum, labnum, I can't even say that word. Laugh at me, vetiver and tobacco. <laughs> and I'm going to be scenting that with the tobacco and coloring it with this swamp thing. Hope that I can get the color of the door um, of bag end. So let's go ahead and put in some of this. My fragrance is in there already, and then I'm just going to give this a little mix, and we'll start pouring into PVC. Lab, labdenum, lab, labdenum, nope, labdenum. Okay. So that's all we're doing with that. I really like that color. Um, I also have this long piece of soap dough that I'm going to try to center in the middle of this soap to make it look like the doorknob. So that is the goal. So I'm going to go ahead and pour in this green and then I'll stick that in the middle and we'll let this sit. Probably not all the way because I need to stick that in there and that's going to take up some space center it, but I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours and I'll come back to tomorrow and I'm going to pour up, whoop, too long, that's fine, look, and I'll just cut it off when it's done. There we go, I think that's going to look so cool. So I have unmolded the Hobbit door and this is what it looks like out of the mold. I did make a little guy so that I can do a large loaf of this, so these will go into the mold like so. But before I even get started on the base of the soap, I want to make these look more like a hobbit door. And I just have to say, I love the color that that turned out. That's that swamp, swamp thing from <laughs> Soapbox Micas. I really think that's a good color for a hobbit door. So I have some soap dough here. This, all my soap dough is is just whatever leftover batter I have. I let it sit out and then I wrap it up in plastic wrap and then I can just mold it like so. That is all my soap dough is, is nothing special. But I've rolled it out and I'm gonna do different strips. I have a ruler here. I'm gonna just line it up and I'll go ahead and do different color strips because there are two different shades of brown here. I don't know if the camera picks it up or not. And then I'm going to wrap them around my Hobbit door. If it doesn't stick, hold on. There we go. Right here.
right, y'all, it is time to assemble the Hobbit Hill that this door is going to go inside of. And I've been just dying to put this together. So much so, I lay in bed and I'm assembling it in my head. But the day has come, and let's go on an adventure. <laughs> let's pour in our lye into my oils here. There's also the sodium lactate and kaolin clay and coconut milk in here as well. And we're just going to give this a very light whirl because I don't want it to get too thick. I am going to do something very special with a layer on this soap. And so it has to stay very fluid. So let's, let's just give it a little mix here. So just barely blended that. And the two colors going into the soap I have in this little bucket here. This is a Jade Green Mica by Nurture. And that's going to be like the grass part of it. And then I have some Yellow Vibrance Mica by Nurture as well. That's going to be the actual house part. So let me go ahead and split off about half of my batter into that bucket. I'm going to just mix up this green first because I want to add a little grass layer into the bottom of my mold before I go doing it anything else. So let's mix this guy up. Okay, so I've got mold over here and I'm just going to pour in a little layer of that green. I didn't add any fragrance to that, not yet. I'll add fragrance to the rest of this, jiggling it to get all those corners filled in. And then I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. And I have this cake cone tool here, kind of like a sculpted layer look. What I did with the fox face soap, I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> Not my favorite technique, but I'm going to give it a go. And I'm gonna try with the smaller fine tooth end to make kind of a grass pattern in here. So I'm gonna let this sit just for about maybe five minutes and then I'll test it out and see if I can get that pattern in there. In the meantime, I will go ahead and add my fragrance to my green and my yellow to my big batter and we'll get going. All right, let's see if we can run this through here. I need to push down more. <laughs> I'm like scared. Okay, push down here. If you want the pattern, you gotta push down. Push down <laughs> all the way through and equally. This always scares me. I'm gonna mess something up. Okay. I'm gonna go over this part that I messed up a little bit. When I can see the bottom of the mold, I don't think that's right. Let's see if I can fix that. Every time I do this, I'm like, I keep playing and playing and playing and playing, and I'm like, I have to stop. <laughs> There's some point to this that I'm like overdoing it. Okay. So let me go ahead and clean up the edges with the other side of this little tool. I love this cake comb. simple tool and just like with most things with soap making you can use stuff that you use for cake baking all right now I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my yellow and put my embed um, door in there Alright, so I got all my yellow in there, and now I'm going to take the rest of that green, and I want to keep mounding on top of this so that it looks like a hill. So I'm going to go ahead and just use an open um, round tip, kind of put a layer of what's going to be the grass on here. 
And then I'm going to add some grass on top of here, which is going to be fun. Okay, that green's really funky. I know it looks like a pea green poop, but it will go back to normal. It always happens with greens and cold processed soap because, well, I don't know, the chemical reaction just causes it to look like that. Here I am trying to attempt some grass with a grass tip. And I'll get it eventually. I'm trying to figure out what looks better. I really don't like this color. <laughs> I'm trying to look past it because I know it's going to be epic when it's to the color it's supposed to be. Oh, it's fine. We'll get there. I promise. I'm sure you guys can guess I'm a huge fan of the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit series. I remember reading the books in high school and I want to say... 2000 early early 2000s and I started reading them because I heard the movies were coming out and of course I was I'm all about reading the books before a movie comes out I don't know why I do it I don't know if it's like let me just ruin the movie for myself because the movies are never as good as the books but I will give it to that series because it was just such a magical thing of what they can do with costumes and um, the effects. It was a great, great series. And now they've even come out with The Hobbit. I love them all. I probably know all the words to every single one of the movies, so don't watch it with me. <laughs> I will just say them all and I can't help myself. Like, even the elven parts, okay? Yes, that makes me 100% dork, okay? <laughs> I remember being so obsessed with movies like the Star Wars movies and the Lord of the Rings movies that back in my day when I ate fast food, they, fast food restaurants came out with everything themed around like big blockbuster hits. Even their like packaging from the bags to the cups to the toys. And you can go buy limited edition special things. I have the Lord of the Rings goblets that have a light up bottom. I have three of them anyway, still in the boxes, never been used. I don't know when I'm going to use them. One day I will pull them out for a special occasion. There are no lack of goblets in this house. But I miss those days. And it's probably best that fast food restaurants aren't like that anymore because I don't eat fast food anymore. Very, very rarely, like, if I'm out with someone and they're like, oh, I'm gonna go get food and I'm starving, okay. But yeah, I don't eat fast food anymore. Chick-fil-A doesn't count. I don't think Chick-fil-A is fast food. That's my opinion. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and get some more of this green icing on here and then the final thing going on the top of this, I have some leaf embeds and I'll probably pipe some flowers on here. I'm going to apologize because you guys can probably hear the neighbor's grandkids outside throwing basketballs into the hoop. That's in the driveway right next to the house. So you're probably going to get a lot of that in there. They're the ones with the dog that barks and all the grandkids. One day I went out there and had to tell grandpa that his kids were using the side of the house as target practice. I was not happy, but um, I can't do anything about it. I'm just gonna, just gonna keep soap in here. And I'll just apologize to you guys if you hear any of it. All right, I am just so excited about this soap. I, I love this PVC embed method and I just I've been dreaming of putting this together for the longest time it's such a special soap for me there's a story to go along with that not just because it reminds me of being a teenager but there is a lot of work going into this soap as you guys can probably see and it's so worth it and that's why I made a big one of these because I know it's going to sell and I want, want to make sure that if I ever wanted to make this again, I could. But this is one of those soaps that's like, a lot of work goes into it, so it's probably gonna be a little bit more expensive than my regular bars. But you guys can see so much 
hard work and love is going into this. All right, that's all the green I can get out of there. So let me go get some of my embeds. So I had poured off some of that batter into a couple different colors. I have some orange here and some purple, and I don't even know what this tip is, but it looked like fun. Again, I have all these weird random tips laying around that I don't know what to do until I use them. So I thought I could, you know, just pipe on what are going to look like flowers randomly all over the soap. Like all the wildflowers that grow in a hobbit's garden. Love this color. I didn't know what color to choose. It was like all these different flower colors I could pick from. But I'm only going to be doing two. It's a detailed soap, but it's not that detailed. Alright, so I can tell you a fun fact that I was lucky enough to stay in a Hobbit house in Maryland. I stayed a weekend in a Hobbit house. When Bradley and I were looking for our wedding venue, I came across a friend's sister who got married at a campground, and it was called Treehouse Camp, Camp at Maple Tree, and it was about an hour away. It's a campsite, and they actually are known for their tree houses that you can go camping in. But I wasn't interested in the tree houses or the cottages they have there. They have a hobbit house. Little round door. It's really cute inside. If I can find some pictures of what the inside looks like, I will leave them in the end of this video for you guys to take a look at our cutesy little wedding pictures. But when I saw this hobbit house, I was like, mm, that's where we're having our wedding. And it, it worked out because it wasn't expensive as like most of the wedding venues that you would go rent out in this world nowadays. But I could rent the whole place for the weekend, which means we got to show up the day before, we got to set up, we got to take down the day after, and it all worked out because all you gotta do is stumble on back to our little hobbit hole at the end of the day to pass out. And it was perfect. Now this, um, this campsite doesn't have any electricity. So a lot of the people that I invited to my wedding, I thought, hey, it's it's a pretty far drive. If you guys want to stay the night, there's camp ground. It's a campground. You can get a little cabin, bring a tent, you know, whatever. And not many people stayed because the no electricity thing. You're really roughing it out there. But I did have electricity in the Hobbit Hole. It was kind of like the bridal suite of the whole entire campground. And by electricity, I mean it had like a plug and a light in the corner. So it wasn't anything like crazy glamping. But it was a special, a special little Hobbit Hole to stay in. All right, I'm gonna get some more purple on there. I think that's enough with the orange. So now for the last bit of flowers with the purple that I have here, doing the same thing. We've since tried to go back to that campground and kind of stay there and relax a little more than trying to plan and have a wedding. But since 2016 when we got married, the place has just gotten so popular it's booked for a very, very long time, and it's really, really expensive. <laughs> so we haven't had the chance to go back and stay there again, but maybe one day we will get to. Good for them, though, because wait till you see my pictures. I, I kind of feel like those pictures, they must have used them somewhere, and it's just drawn so much attention to that little hobbit hole, and more people know about it now. My real dream is to go to the 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 filming set in New Zealand where they have the actual little town of Hobbiton then you can go look at the set houses that they used in the films that would be really neat 
New Zealand looks really pretty anyway, and I'd just love to go there. And an even bigger dream of mine is to have like a she shed in the backyard, but a soap shed where I can make soap and it would be in the shape of a hobbit house. So next, next house we buy, the requirement, it has to have a hill in the backyard, right? <laughs> that would be so cool. Okay, I think I'm just going to put on a little bit of glitter on here. Let this sit for 24 hours and then we'll come back to cut it. I am so excited to see what it looks like on the inside. As I always am with all of my soaps, but this one's just, it's going to be so cool. I'm sure there are easier ways I could go about making this Hobbit house and I've thought of many of those, but I'm happy with the the technique that I used. A little spray with the rubbing alcohol and I will bring you guys back tomorrow for the cut and then I'm just looking forward to that green going back to the color I wanted to as well. Alright, let's cut into this. Super exciting! It's got so many spring vibes going on right now. I am going to cut off a little bit of this end piece so that the person who gets it Still gets a little door in there. Look at that. That is amazing. I love it. <laughs> I was so scared that this fragrance oil was going to ruin that green color. I woke up at probably 4 o'clock in the morning to check on it because I'm like, it's not turning back. It can't be straw colored. It's got to be green. It did turn back. So with that said, I got to say I do absolutely love this fragrance. It is very easy to work with. It is a clean smelling fragrance and it kind of borders on the line of masculine and unisex, I gotta say. But it was a pleasure to work with and I think I will continue, if I ever do make this soap again, I will continue to make it with this fragrance. Oh, that just turned out so cool. I'm so happy with that. And this is one of those soaps that's like, I feel like there's two different kinds of soaps. There's the structural soaps and then there's like the technique to the pour soaps. And I'm always fighting with myself, do I like making uniformed soaps that when I cut into it, everyone is exactly the same? Or do I like doing like in the pot swirls and hanger swirls and getting unique designs in each and every single one? I don't know. I think I like them both the same. So I'm not going to cut up too much of the soap because obviously <laughs> there's just a hobbit door going throughout the whole entire thing. But it's really cool. Oy. Let's see if I can get an up close look on that grass at the bottom. Hmm. Let's see. Can you see it? It did make a cool little design. I'm just having a hard time getting it to focus. There we go. And there's the top of it. And there's the door. Awesome sauce. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to purchase this soap, it will be available on May 24th. That is the next release date. You can grab yourself a little hobbit door. Thank you so much again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. New to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time, I hope you have a very nice day, and I'll smell you later.